It's interesting for us in this country, Beth, because uh, we're in a situation at the moment where we've heard a great deal about what you do. There's an album released, but don't know really about you as a person. How did you first get involved in the music business? The music business? If you like, yeah. Well, it was, uh, I didn't know I was going to get involved in the music business. If I had, I never would have gotten involved, <laughs> because it's full of madmen and crazy people. Um, I started, I just, I, I was, it was sort of an extension of what I was doing in the theater. I wanted to be, always wanted to be a great lady of the theater. Mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, I reached the theater just as it was kicking off. So uh, music was really the only place left where there was really some kind of uh, expression available to mm -hmm. one. So I, I took that way out, you know. I was always, I've always been fascinated by it, but I never considered it as a career because I liked the theater. I thought I liked the theater much better. So what I, I've actually done is taken my what I have from the theater and added my musical my musical talents mm. to it, as it were, and I've come up with sort of theatrical music. Because <laughs> I read somewhere not too long ago that uh, by somebody who sort of considered you a female David Bowie in many words. Do, oh, do you, my, 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 my. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you see that there's a, a comparison? I haven't seen him work. I've never seen him work. I'm very curious to see him work. Uh, I've heard his albums. I like his albums. I've seen pictures of him, but I've never seen him work live. I mm. must. I, I, I'd have to see him before I made that judgment. Mm. You regard what you do very much so as a, a cross between theatre and rock, if you like. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Very definitely. For how long were you, were you involved in theatre? Well, I was. In, I've been heavily. In, I was heavily involved in it from the time I was about fifteen, mm. to uh, to just about four years ago, and uh, I spent. I. I, I wanted to, I really was anxious to have a, a long career in the theater, you know, where you went from character to character, you know, from role to role. Mm. But uh, it doesn't work that way in the professional theater in the States. It, you get into a show, if you're on Broadway, you get into a show and then you stay with the show until you get another job. And the other job, the, there, it's hard to find jobs because it's pretty much of a closed shop. Mm. You know, I mean, if you're not there, they have a number of great ladies already and they're not looking for too many others. You know, yeah. so um, so I spent three years in one show, and uh, it was uh, the first two years was a great experience. I learned a lot, you know. Mm. But the third year, I was I was ready for the booby hatch, you know. Mm. So I decided I ha really felt a need to express myself. So I started singing in mm. these little dumps and. Because the interesting thing about the album is there are so many different kinds of things on the album. Yeah. It's and you a, were a long time in making that album too, by the way. Yes, you? I was. Part of the reason I was so long in making it was because we were out on the road in between mm. recording sessions. But it did take a while. Because I really wanted it to be, I wanted it to be uh, a musical adventure. And it was the first time I had ever been in the studio. I was pretty frightened, you know. It took me about three months before I got over my initial terror. Mm. You know, I was just, I was just going, oh. <laughs> what is going on? You know, because it was a new medium, mm. and every time you slip yourself, you, every time you get into a new medium, you have to learn what it's about, and sometimes it's really hard. You know, like television is just really hard. Mm. I find it really difficult, but I'm learning about it. You know, and and uh, that's what ha that's it's the same way in the studio. You have to learn how to work in that particular closed situation without a live audience. You know. Mm. And uh, that's what it took me a long time to do it. Do you feed very much off the audience when you? Oh, working? very much. Oh, I, yes, absolutely, mm. absolutely. That's that is. I think that's my main attraction, because I'm one. I am one of the few people. I have the feeling that people are going to start doing it much more now. I, I'm one of the few women around who actually relates to the audience, mm. you know, individually and as a unit, you know. That's that's my ba I think that's my main attraction, my main charm. Because mm. I really like them, you know. I yeah. really enjoy them. I like the fact that they actually spent money to see <laughs> me, you know. So I always, you know, come out and try to give them a giggle. Yeah. You know, make what, them What cheerful. kind of gigs do you do in America? Well, I used to do, like for the last year and a half, I've been doing um, small clubs and uh, brothels. But uh, lately I've... Uh, <laughs> Lately, I've expanded to the concert hall area. You know, I do concerts now, sort of, uh, sort of theatrical shows in 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 concert halls. What do you mean by brothels, Ben? Oh well, you know, <laughs> places of ill repute. Because I was reading something in uh, Rolling Stone not too long ago, yes. talking about you doing gigs oh, at baths, yes, and I didn't know anything about that at well, all. Well, Ed, <clears throat> Ed McCormick, the man who wrote that article, he's very much enamored of the decadent aspect of the divine, and uh, that's me. And um, 
he, I started, I, I became very popular at a place in Manhattan called the Continental Baths, which was a, um, a steam bath for a homosexuals, a health club, a homo, an exclusively homosexual health club. When I started working there, it was really a dump, you know, it was the paint was, the plaster was falling off, you know, and the steam was coming out of the room. And, but uh, I worked there, I, I caught on there. That's really where I got my, my big boost. And um, the place has become quite decorated since uh, <laughs> I spent a year there and, and it went through a lot of transitions. The man that owns it, he's constantly changing it. He brings in palm trees and birds and the birds, of course, immediately die. <laughs> I spend two weeks in the steam and they pass away. I, I'm sending out an injunction against him. Because um, reading this thing in Rolling Stone, I mean, I've, I've already read a great deal about you. There's uh, been an interview in Interview, the Andy Warhol. <laughs> Oh, yes. Thing. yes. Uh, the Rolling Stone thing. <laughs> Richard Williams in this country has written a great deal about what you do. I mean, do you, do you feel there's pressure on you because of what people expect? No, now? I ignore it. I just ignore it because it's not what doesn't mean a lot to me. Mm. It's not what I'm after in the long run. Uh, what I'm really in, involved in is what I do, you know, the, the music and the, and the pre presentation of uh, my particular music and art to mm. the audience. That's, that's my main concern. I, I don't pay too much attention to what they write, you know, because if you do, you could really go mad. Mm. You could really just lose your cookies. Mm. So I don't do that. You know, I, I look at them, I look at them, and I look at the pictures, and I put them away. And uh, because it's interesting, everybody has something else to say about what I do. But that's part of it, too, you know. You're, people only take what you, take from you what they, what they can. Mm you know what they're capable of taking from you what they they impose their own their own ideas and their own limitations on you you know it's their own um, translation and I so it's all very personal and subjective so mm -hmm. that's why I don't pay any attention to it because I have my own ideas about what I do yeah. you, know. <laughs> you were saying just earlier that, that had you known what the music business was going to be like you wouldn't <laughs> have involved yourself in it why do you say that oh it's the pits isn't it why well it's just I don't know. I th I'm very lucky. I have I'm 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 handled by some good people, and and uh, I have a wonder. I have, I'm with a wonderful record label, Atlantic. It was the co company I really was. I really thought if I ever made records, that I would wa my dream would be to be on the same label as Aretha Franklin was on. Mm. And then I got on, and she uh, <laughs> she left. <laughs> <laughs> She didn't leave. I don't know if she's leaving or not, but uh, that was, it's Atlantic, and I was really thrilled to be on it, because I consider it, a, consider it an, an excellent label. Some, some, very, some of my favorite artists are on the label, mm. and they've been wonderful to me. They've just been great, but uh, I don't know. It's just, it's very competitive, yeah. and I was not aware of that. I was not aware of how competitive it was, and I was not aware of the, the kind of... Um, drive and backbone that you have to have in order to survive and 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 make a career of it mm -hmm. and these kids these these men of these women who who don't who are still alive and who are still making records and are, who are still having hits I just give them a lot of credit you know because they just they're they must be very strong people I mean I made that record and I was almost I was almost broken down at the end of it mm -hmm. I wanted to die at when when it was finally over really mm. it took so much out of me and some people they just go go in and turn turn out hit after hit and sustain themselves and have careers jagger i mean i just don't know how he does it i just go <laughs> <laughs> take a lot of vitamins do you <laughs> Bette midler thank you very much you're indeed. very welcome amazing that was the divine miss Anne.